Welcome to the attempt two of making this video. In this video, we're going to walk through that how we can deploy a node based application on a VPS machine and you can configure this with the domain name and pretty much anything that you want. Uh, the recording is uh, attempted on number two because the first one didn't went according to the plan and yeah, stuff happened. So I guess uh, just a small love in the comment section that hey, thanks for doing it one more time uh, would be really, really motivation for me. Otherwise, it's not easy to record these videos back to back and that to another uh, attempt to. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, what we are going to do. Now, it is a common scenario that you have your node based application or any JavaScript application doesn't really need to be node. It really good uh, suits in the title, but it could be bun or any other application. You want to put that onto a VPS and make it available on some URL. That is the goal and we're going to fulfill that. Let me walk you through. Uh, since this is an attempt to, a uh, couple of things are already installed on the system, but we're going to do attempt them again. So no worries on that part. Uh, again, there is a documentation on node, deploy node API with the reverse proxy. Yes, we're going to make a reverse proxy as well. The whole thing is documented up here. So the step one is go ahead and install Node.js. So we're going to go ahead and copy this and go back up here. And we're going to go ahead and install this. This is not going to take much time. So let me go ahead and have this one here. So all right, so this sh shouldn't take much time. In your case, this is going to take painfully a lot of time, painstakingly a lot of time. But in my case, it's actually easy because hey, you guessed it, attempt to. So I get this. All right, so both of the packages are installed. Now, in case you want to install further more packages, maybe you want to get the application through the Git. There are command line utilities to get the inst uh, Git installation up here. And then you can run a Git clone and all these commands. In my case, I want to go ahead and create an application which is going to be fresh from this documentation so that steps are repeatable for you as well. I'm going to go ahead and back up here. And then I'm going to go ahead and do a simple uh, ls, uh, this is, and I'm going to do a pwd for getting the present working directory. I am into slash home slash the user here. Now the next step says that once you are into any directory, go ahead and create a new directory. We're going to call this one as express app. Good enough. Let's go with that and move into express app. So there we go. And I do a quick ls. There is nothing inside it. Now, although you can run this command of npm init dash y and can install these packages, I'll, I'll show you alternative way as well of handling this. Uh, go ahead and copy this whole code and we can simply go ahead and create a file package.json and install it through that as well. Again, they are exactly the same. So let me go ahead and do this. I'm going to go ahead and create a new file and that needs to be exactly called as package package.json. So once you are into the file package.json, let's go ahead and open this up as nano package.json and we're going to go ahead and paste this, the whole thing. Couple of things you need to be careful about this command or this whole package is we are we need to install this express and node mon. Right now they are not installed. We have just mentioned them as the dependency. So these versions are not going to bother you much. The application is pretty much standalone and standard. Also keep an eye on this type module, which is important for especially for JavaScript developers. So the best idea is copy this into a package.json file and then go ahead and write this out and exit this and then since you have installed npm and node and all these things, if I do ls, I see this package.json file. All I can do is npm install and that's it. Just, just mention npm i, that's it. If the file is present in the same current directory, package.json, all rest of all the things will automatically get installed. So we can just skip the command. If I do a quick ls, we can see node modules are there, lock file is there. You can also go and follow the step of creating npm init-y and then installing it. But there is a problem with that. You have to come up manually and set this, uh, first of all, this type as module. That is important. And then you have to set up the script as well. Now, since we have already done this, we don't need to worry too much about that. All right. Next up is we need to create an index.js file as well. And we're going to copy this whole code and we'll be pasting that as well. So let's go ahead and do that again. We are going to say touch index.js and we are going to use nano index.js, open this up, paste whole thing, and that's it. We are all done. Everything should be up and running now. Now let's go ahead and write this. And we're going to go ahead and say yes, write this, and uh, let's exit this as well. 
All right, now in theory at least, the application should be up and running. So we can test this out. There should be some commands. Uh, we'll come back on to the NPM2 and everything. But first of all, what we need to do is just see the application is running. And there's a simple way. Uh, the command is actually written in your package.json. So you can simply run the command npm run dev and that should in theory at least should be able to run this command. So if I go ahead and say npm uh, run dev, uh, this should, so my application server is running on port 80. I can actually go ahead and uh, use a lot of things. But the whole idea is we should be able to get this uh, server is up and running. I can see that. No, this, yeah, this is the one. So server is up and running. <laughs> That's nice. Server is up and running on this one. I want to close this server. Now, as soon as you hit control C, this is going to kill your server. That means now your application is no longer running. We need a utility which can keep our application up and running. And in the background also, we can, we would love to find out the CPU performance and lots of other stats as well. Apart from this, if our application crashes due to some reason, I want this application to be automatically restarted. So for this, we need a package known as PM2, which does this exact job. So once you try, go ahead and install this PM2. This is not going to install like this. Uh, for this, you need to read a little bit of the more comments. So if uh, npm is not available, use sudo npm install. So in your case, you have to use this command sudo npm install. Read the comments. Comments are good. So as you can see, this one is giving you the issues. Go ahead and use sudo npm install dash PM2. This is going to go ahead and install PM2 as an application. It's already installed in my system. Shouldn't take much of the time. It's already there. Come on. Come on, you can do it faster. All right, so it's already there. Now the next step is to simply go ahead and run this npm run dev command. So I can just go ahead and copy this. Only thing you have to be careful here is when you do an ls, you should be able to see the package.json file, which is right here. Once you're here, you can just go ahead and run the command. I can just hit command Z and I can just see copy. And there we go. So PM2 uh, run NPM. And by the way, PM2, if this is again giving you the issues, you can go ahead and run the sudo, but I don't think so. This will give us issues. So if I go ahead and run this, there we go. This is running, CPU usage is almost nothing. It's running in the background. It's all good, it's all good. Any case, in any case you want to run or get more information, you can just go ahead and say PM2 list. It will give you list of all the applications that are running. You can restart it. You can use this ID to start any command like restart or anything you want to do. PM2 restart, then provide the ID. That's all, so what we have to do. Now after this, once we are done with this, we have to do some of the configuration in the Nginx file to make sure that our application is serving because now comes up the second part of the tutorial because this was just an application. You bring it through the Git or any way you bring it, the application is up and running now. Now the most important part, PM2 is already being taken care. We can just go ahead and simply run npm run dev. Whatever the command you want to run, it will be keep on running there. The next step is reverse proxy. Now our application is running on localhost 8080. We just mentioned this, the application will start here at port 8080. And this is also mentioned in the code part that, hey, we'll be using 8080 as your port, as your port number. So this application is running on localhost colon 8080. Uh, you can also do a curl on this one to see that whether things are going good or not. So I can just go ahead and use curl. And I can use dash i option, that is nice to have. And I'm going to go ahead and say 127.0.0.1 colon 8080 slash API. This is where the application is actually serving. So once I go ahead and test this out, that means 200 OK is great. It's an express application. The content is there. We're not much worried about what content is served. The dash I option gives you all the header information that, hey, application is running at least good on locally. Once we're done with this, now we can go ahead and see how we can set up a reverse proxy. The reverse proxy is being set onto this file. So let's go into slash etc slash nginx. So let's go to cd slash etc nginx default sites available. Once I do an ls, I see the default file. So I'm going to go ahead and do a sudo nano nano default. Open this up and now we have to change a couple of things. First of all, uh, you're going to notice that a couple of more stuffs are there. For example, listen 443. These are being added by the cert bot in the last video in case you saw that. And since this is my recording two of the videos, these things were not there for you, uh, but this needs to be there. So in case you are worried about, this is all the configuration that you have to mention in this file. First of all, add listen 80, and then after that, change this server name 
from your website name to localhost. This is being done because now we are actually incorporating a reverse proxy. So don't worry, previously it was saying in the previous configuration, we saw that we used to just go ahead and call it like this. Yeah, the server name was the website. So this is at the time of installing the SSL certificate. Now it's not required. Now we are configuring the reverse proxy. So in case of reverse proxy, we're going to go ahead and name this as server name localhost. This is important. Make sure the listen is 80 and this just copy paste this one. That's it. That's all you need. Now what it does, it actually prop, uh, puts up a proxy pass. So whenever your application, it is expecting that the traffic will come on Nginx on port uh, 443. It is mentioned at the bottom of this configuration file. I'll show you that in a minute. But once the traffic comes into the application on port 443, it needs to be redirected on some other port. That's the whole goal of having the proxy. So this proxy pass redirects the traffic on this port. In case you are running your application with the bun, maybe Java, maybe uh, Python, Django, whatever you are building, just make sure however you run that on your local host, it's running with some processes like PM2 or anything else and just keep it up and running. And then in the proxy pass, mention this, this URL up here. The rest of these configuration will remain exactly same. These whole configurations are responsible for transferring the whole user information about the who is requesting it, the IP address, the headers, all these information directly to my application so that my application take further advantage of it. For example, uh, X forwarded, the real IP, the host address, host information, all these things information need to be passed on. Once you go ahead and do this, uh, then you have to, all you have to do is sudo nginx-t, which will give you the option of, hey, everything is up and running. In my case, I just re -recording, I'm just re-recording the video, so all these information are here. But go ahead and copy paste this, nothing big deal. Now in case you're wondering, if you go a little bit bottom here, again there is a server directive or server segment here, which actually mentions all this daily streak app and all these things. So yes, your application will still be running on port 443 or SSL, HTTPS, nothing to be worried. I'm going to go ahead and write this out. So Control O, yes, write this out and Control X to exit this. Then simply go ahead and just grab this one. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and paste it. If there are any errors or issue, it will mention it. Otherwise, syntax, OK, everything is OK. That's good. Let's go ahead and restart this since we have recently just configured the application, made it up and running. It should be all good. Now, once this is all good, now what you have to do is go onto your application. So wherever that daily streak application is, and then mention the slash API. Remember one more thing, the application that we have deployed, the code is written in such a way that there is nobody and nothing is being served on the slash. Everything is being served on slash API. So this is where you have to move on. Otherwise, you'll be keep on wondering how things are there and it's not working. So we can see that it says server is working and this whole application, this whole data is coming up from our application itself. Now we can go ahead and try to uh, modify this. So I'm going to go ahead and do CD and we can go into the express app. Let's go into express app and do a quick LS. We can go ahead and touch the index.js as well. Let's go ahead and say, I want to use nano and I will open the index.js. I'll go up here and I'll change this message to something else. Maybe this is how your application is working. Server working at uh, chai code. There we go. We're going to go ahead and write this out and we're going to go ahead and close this out. Now, probably we need to restart uh, the PM2 process. I don't think so. It's going to be required because it's already being run by Nodemon. But again, it might be the cause. It might be the case. If I go ahead and re reload this one, uh, we didn't need to restart. But in some cases, you might need to restart. But you can see the application is serving the code directly from your application itself. And that's all it takes. Told you, it's not really a big deal. Uh, the whole documentation is with you, how the application is being built. The whole reverse proxy and everything is there. Whatever the previous configurations are there for the cert or the certification for HTTPS, just make sure they are there. I'll once again walk you through how the configuration file looks like in my system. So I'm going to go ahead CD and we're going to go CD slash EDC. Love the suggestions. And we can just go ahead and say nano. I should use sudo. Sudo nano nano and we are going to open the default and this is how it looks like notice here server 80 as mentioned server name localhost remember this exactly same no changes there then uh, this doesn't really bother much 
is not going to bother you anyhow uh, because this is going to serve uh, just the basics. So if I go ahead and have this, because those files are not being served, these are being overwritten here. So having these things is not going to bother you much or is not going to take an impact because now we have configured this proxy pass, which is a reverse box proxy configuration. So technically this should be commented out. These are not required. The most important part is this location, the whole directives and the segment, the proxy pass, wherever your application is running and make sure it is already up and running. The rest of the configuration I haven't touched. These are added by the cert bot. So listen on port 443 with the SSL, the certificates are there, included the let's encrypt certificate. All these things are configured properly. Not only that, this whole block was also added by the cert bot. I'm not going to touch it. So if the host is daily streak, it just uh, returns the 301, a uh, URL managed by the cert bot. Everything is mentioned here. I'm not going to touch that. So that's your basics of it. I'm going to go ahead and exit this. But yeah, I hope these documentation are going to help you a lot in understanding the things and you can just go ahead and reload the Nginx. So that is it. Uh, pretty nice and easy. And I'm pretty sure now you are confident in running your own VPS, putting up on your own SSL and a node based application. Pretty good, pretty good stuff. Go ahead and let me know in the comment section first that are you enjoying these tutorials? Are they really helpful? The docs are helpful or at least just a comment. Hey, this is a fun tutorial. That's it for this video and let's go ahead and catch up in the next one.